Welcome to the third episode of Content Creator Friday Talk. I'm Frédéric, co-founder of Foxy Nerds, and I'm co this show with Cyril. How are you today, Cyril? Hi, Frédéric. Uh, I'm very well. I'm in the sunny radio today. In our two-day episode, we will be discussing the latest industry insight, introducing a new powerful tool, and featuring a B2B influencers. First, we will dive into the current trend and insight in the B2B marketing space, and we will discuss and exchange about Meta. Next, we will introduce you a powerful Chrome extension for ChatGPT that can, that can help streamline your content creation process. In addition, we will feature a B2B influencer who has made a significant impact in the industry. And finally, we will wrap up the show with a fun and interactive segment where we'll use ChatGPT prompt to generate unique content ideas. So without delay, start with Meta. Last Sunday, Mark Zuckerberg launched Meta Verify. So who is concerned? For the moment, only content creators. The cost is uh, between 12 or 15 uh, bucks uh, only for iOS users. And for the moment, it's only tested in Australia and it's New Zealand. And uh, if I just have an extract of uh, Mark Zuckerberg post, he explains that the Meta Verified uh, is a subscription service that lets you verify your account with a government ID, get a blue badge, get extra impersonation protection against uh, accounts claiming to be you, and get direct access to customer support. This new feature is about increasing authenticity and security across our services. So, uh, Cyril, when you when you saw that information, what was your first impression? As a content creator, do you think it could be interesting for you to be beta verified? Um, well, interestingly, I'm not at all on, on, on Facebook or Instagram as a content creator. Uh, for Facebook, uh, I've been there since 2004, when it was still uh, 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 locked in the university uh, ecosystem uh, and uh, basically all the people who are connected to me on Facebook or Instagram are people I know in real life. Um, so you are so, not the target of uh, Mark Zuckerberg? I, I'm not the target. I'm not the target of Mark Zuckerberg. I think I, think I understand why he's doing this because you have a lot of uh, groups, powerful groups, uh, sometimes local, sometimes about a specific topic. Uh, who are monetized heavily by uh, coaches, courses, uh, creators, um, with uh, membership subscription in some cases, extra. So I think he, he wants a share of that. Um, is it the right way to do it? Uh, I think they don't want to think too hard on that case and just copied what has been done before. Uh, in my view, he should have maybe said, you know what, if you are uh, a, a group, if you monetize your content via some specific groups and you are not a charity or whatever, you know, uh, then I'm going to ask you to, you know, one dollar per month per user, something like this, you know, if you charge a, a group access or a course several hundred dollars, you can spend a couple of dollars to, to provide a platform. And on this platform, you could have added some uh, uh, you know, membership payment facilities, uh, better uh, video uh, creation tools, extra. He, he, he could have really brought, created something here, but I think he, he went the lazy way. He said, well, let, let's make a few bucks. Uh, let's target content creators uh, and uh, let's just copy what uh, Elon Musk has done. So um, it's disappointing. I understand. In... I, I understand your point, but do you... You don't think that it also could be a trap for customers because when you will see that people are meta verified you will be in confidence to work potentially with us or to buy their um, uh, their coaching or something like that and at the end if the only thing you have to do is to say i'm uh, i'm frederic bruno and uh, uh, it's just uh, 12 bucks and i'm meta verified if I want to uh, to create very uh, low quality content or or something like that and to monetize it, at the end there is no um, there is no obstacle to to do that. So well, you are doing you are doing a process to um, to increase 
um, people trust, but at the end, you also facilitate um, um, uh, wrong use of this uh, of these services. Because if you are okay. only have to 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 to, uh, to verify by yourself with a with a, with an ID. Mm, no, but uh, I, I mean, uh, before the blue check was a proof that you are who you say you are and that you are an honest person. That was before uh, Elon Musk started to send the blue check. Now the blue check is just use you are who you say you are, theoretically. But it doesn't mean you are an honest person. <laughs> and, yeah, absolutely. Um, it, uh, and this so, is the point. It, 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 so I, I think we, it, it, it doesn't mean that what you are going to sell, what you are going to produce is quality and uh, um, it's uh, it's great products. So I think we need to uh, differentiate that and we need just to educate people about this is just an identity check. It's not a quality check. Totally maybe that will be the you. next product I'm going to sell. <laughs> maybe, maybe. And um, in my opinion, what is could be really interesting for uh, for people to be uh, to be meta verified is to if if they have a visibility boost, and especially if you if you starting at uh, at content creators, because if you are a big one. You don't need visibility boost on Meta. You already have a lot of uh, a lot of followers, a lot of visibility thanks to algorithm and so on. But if you uh, if you're launching your um, your business as a content creator on uh, on Meta, Instagram or Facebook, and uh, you, and you could have a visibility boost because you are you are doing right things, it could um, it could value the price at the end. Well, if if the uh, if the boost uh, is just basically spamming people, uh, expecting to connect, you know, uh, uh, how you're going to boost, you know, what is the algorithm behind that? Um, you know, as usual, you if it's too easy to guess what the algorithm is doing, some people are going to crack it and hack it very easily. Um, so, uh, based on my experience on Twitter and the discussions I had about the a supposed boost in visibility of the tweets that doesn't happen. Uh, it doesn't happen because I guess there are so many boosts at the same time that basically uh, if you get more visibility about something, you're going to get less visibility about something else. So at the Absolutely. end, you know, uh, it, 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 the sum of all the actions are, uh, are zero. And I think it's going to be more or less the same on Facebook. What you may gain on one side, you're going to lose it on the other side. Um, Prove me wrong. We'll know in a few months how it works. Oh, maybe, but we have to we, we have to be re, be very careful on the, on that point and see how it uh, could be an impact of the of people visibility, and also in in the same way um, as, as you mentioned, because it's it's always a question of of balance, you know, uh, in terms of content. If only people who are meta verified have a great visibility, what's happened to the others? You know, so we have to be very careful on the way it will be implemented, and um, and definitely uh, we uh, we need to have more information also about uh, about uh, the way algorithm will be uh, um, will will change in the in the next coming uh, weeks. Uh, thanks to uh, thanks to that, and remember that for the moment it's only in test in New Zealand and Australia. So uh, we have no idea about the result of the test. So if if it's going uh, very very bad, maybe we will not have in the US, in UK, or France uh, anymore. So um, just uh, just be very careful. But my own also uh, other um, uh, question is. Uh, it's a lot of uh, subscription now to be a content creator on social media. Uh, at the beginning, you, you you don't have to pay for Twitter, you don't have to pay for Instagram, you don't have to pay for Facebook, Snapchat, or something like that. And now you've got a subscription-based model for uh, LinkedIn, for uh, Twitter, for Meta, for Snap, for uh, for YouTube also. So it's it, it starts to be a, a lot of uh, of subscription now to use this kind of tools. This is, this is, does it mean this is the end of uh, 
of uh, free, uh, fr completely free tools uh, in social media. It's it's um, a paradigm change in terms of uh, um, of social media use. Paradigm shift. No, I, I uh, you can still be successful on YouTube without using premium. Premium is only for uh, consumers to just remove the ads and have some access to some uh, of the series they produce. Uh, so if you are time short, uh, like me, so you are on YouTube premium, but just to skip the ads, you have the download functionality also, which is very useful. Uh, so for 12, I think it's 12 dollars, 12 pounds per month. Um, you know, it saves me probably a few hours per month, so it's definitely worth the the, the few uh, uh, the few amount of the subscription. LinkedIn Premium is very different because it's more targeted to uh, job seekers because you LinkedIn pretends that with uh, the premium profile, you, your profile is boosted in um, in the recruiter's. Uh, uh, search results page when they search for a specific profile. Um, uh, it's not really for content creator. This kind of subscription is really for job seekers. I mean, like 95% of revenues on LinkedIn uh, come job from seekers uh, seekers. or sales guy. Job seeker or sales guy, exactly. Uh, uh, Twitter blue, so we it's still too early to, to have any, any return about is it useful or not. Uh, but I noticed that many content creators still haven't jumped to the blue tick. Also, because it's not available around the world yet. So, you know, it's a bit discriminatory now. Uh, and the same with Facebook. Uh, Facebook and uh, um, Instagram will see only, well, in a few months how it works. So, you see, uh, the offer is not the same for uh, all the platforms. Um, uh, you can live without YouTube Premium. You can live without LinkedIn Premium if you are a content creator because this provides no value at all for you. Uh, yeah. Twitter Blue, I'm still not convinced that this has any impact on your views or um, uh, an increase in number of followers. So, and the same Facebook will need to see that. So, time will say. Um, Let's talk now about AI PRM for ChatGPT. It's a Chrome extension that unlocks all the power, in my opinion, of ChatGPT. Cyril, you uh, introduced me this tool. Uh, could you give us a short introduction also for all our uh, audiences? Yes, so um, um, uh, AI PRM is a Chrome extension that is also available for Microsoft Edge. Okay, so it, it works everywhere. So you just install it as a regular extension. And when after you load ChatGPT, uh, you will have a, a, a different page. You will have a different um, yeah. uh, home page. Uh, so one that Frederick is, can, is showing you right now. Yeah, as people can see now, you have in fact um, um, prompt uh, and pre-recorded prompt for uh, AI uh, for ChatGPT. Voilà. So one of the problems before with the prompts that were provided by default is that they were far too simple. They were just like not very uh, evolved for uh, our current needs with ChatGPT. So this community created uh, some prompts that are uh, uh, voted uh, up by uh, a member. So you can create your, you can submit your prompt. And if the community thinks that it's a great prompt, it will go up, up, up uh, every time we go uh, and make a search. So, uh, for example, uh, in uh, you can make a search live uh, with a term, um, uh, let, 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 let's say a blog, for example. I'm sure we'll have something. Uh, yeah. So if we if we uh, are making this search, we've got different prompt. For instance, outline outline for blog articles. Uh, human writing, plagiarism, free SEO optimized content, one click blog post or blog post title generators, uh, mid journey prompt ultra detail, and write a unique article based on uh, another one. 
So if you have got a previous one uh, uh, that you really like and you want to, to create a new version of this article, you have to use this prompt. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And what is great also, you can see at the top on the on the, on, on, on top right, is that you can create your own uh, your own prompt if you don't want to share them, yeah. uh, and basically build your own collection. Which also it's a bit complicated right now with ChatGPT because either you have to go back on the history to retrieve the ones that looks like it, or you need to keep your Excel spreadsheet separated. So it's nice and clean to have your own collection of your um, recurring uh, prompt. Uh, and or or see you know what, what what people think is the most efficient way. I I I expect this tool to expand very quickly and to have some very very niche applications in the next few months. So uh, I strongly recommend you install this free uh, extension. But Cyril, uh, I suggest that we we, we just uh, use one of these prompts and have uh, an example for uh, for people. So uh, so let's for instance. Um, use um, uh, this one to create content calendar, uh, and we we already um, we 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 already uh, uh, do do this prompt. So we say uh, we are um, a content. We, we want to create a content uh, creator um, a publication calendar specifically in energy transition industry. We uh, we specify uh, the tone. We say. We want to um, to write in an optimistic tone and in instructive writing style. And at the end, um, ChatGPT and EIPRM generate this kind of uh, content calendar. So you've got all uh, the blog post title uh, and um, and the publication date. And you've got uh, an example of what you can have for, for one once. And you can also, uh, after that, select just one title and use another prompt to start working on your, um, on, on your uh, blog post. So, uh, in my opinion, it's a real great tool uh, that uh, you can, uh, with, who unlock, in fact, the power of uh, of ChatGPT, and you know that all these prompts are working very well. There is a huge community behind, so uh, you can use it uh, to um, to gain a lot of time at the end. Absolutely, Something I think to... that's a uh, yeah. I think that's a fantastic way to also learn to write efficient prompt because you know one of the issues right now is that. People, uh, some people are disappointed by ChatGPT saying, oh, it, it just responds always the same thing, or it's very simple, it's too high level. It's because you don't go deep enough in your prompt. So that's a way to do it. If you don't know, if you don't you know, want to invest the time, uh, here you have some curated prompts by a large number of um, uh, ChatGPT users, and the results you're going to get is going to be much better than what you you just tried before uh, staying Absolutely. at a very high level. So uh, Absolutely. try it, try it, yeah. Wonderful. So Cyril, you know that during this show, we like also to introduce great campaign or content creators. If for this week, uh, we decided to put forward a, a woman. Uh, if I tell you um, the insert tech queen, uh, you, you think about who? I think about Sabine, <laughs> Sabine exactly. van der Linden. Sabine uh, van der Linden, the insert tech queen. I know that she's a, 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 one of your, one of your friends. Could you uh, introduce uh, us uh, more about about Sabine? Yeah. So we've been living in London like for ages, but we, our, our paths never crossed in London. And uh, we uh, were contacted to do a, a campaign together last uh, last year. Um, and uh, so we, the first time we met was basically in the studio where we were directly doing the recording. Um, <laughs> uh, and since then we've been in touch. And she's—I uh, uh, mean, I, I knew her, you know, from from, from our tweets, extra. But it's very different after you know when you meet someone uh, and uh, you say, you know, she's she's uh, authentic, genuine. You know, we you see, you know, in the different videos. 
Um, I, she also invited me to share the stage with her for the uh, uh, for an insurance conference uh, for women in tech, and we both talk about social media. Uh, and who you see is uh, is exactly Sabine, uh, yeah. and she's uh, she's involved so in uh, in the startup uh, in the startup area around insurtech and fintech in London and I guess somewhere else. Uh, and I just wanted to to yeah to to put her uh, on the spotlight uh, because she's doing really a great job in uh, on LinkedIn. On, uh, on Twitter to, you know, she, she has a micro niche uh, uh, in short tech, uh, especially around uh, um, startups in this, uh, uh, in this area. Uh, she knows this uh, industry, you know, uh, top to bottom. She's uh, ex extremely well connected. It's like everybody knows her. And every time I mention Sabine, say, oh, of course I know Sabine. <laughs> so uh, follow Sabine uh, at uh, Sabine yeah. VDL. Uh, S A B I N E V D L on Twitter and uh, Sabine uh, van der Linden uh, V A N D E R L E L I N D E N uh, on on LinkedIn. Uh, she's a uh, she's a fantastic woman uh, on uh, on the insurtech topic, uh, and uh, yeah, and I strongly recommend you follow her. Absolutely. I just just had, just want to add that she's a huge professional. You cannot imagine how professional Sabine is. It's it's crazy, and it's a pleasure to work with her. And is, she's also very humble and generous. Uh, I remember the first meeting I've got uh, with Sabine. I explained what we are doing at Foxy Nerds, and uh, she is uh, really enthusiastic, you know, uh, about what we are doing. And I ask for nothing, but just after our meeting, she introduced me to. Uh, for other people to start working also with uh, with, with them, and so Sabine is is really um, a generous uh, person. Oh, I'm really happy that we uh, we we speak about uh, her today. But uh, a, li a little bit more of ChatGPT, maybe, Cyril. Oh yeah, we didn't have enough today. Oh, so what is yeah. the we what, have what is the problem of the week? Yeah. GPT. So the problem yeah, of the, the week, and it is it is one of your prompts. I, I, I have to to confess that you you work on this prompt and you you prepare this this prompt, and um, you to prepare this prompt you say, I want to challenge myself as a sales guy. And, exactly uh, so. And and maybe can you introduce the prompt? Yes. Yeah, so one way to use ChatGPT is not just for for him to you know generate some answers, but to use it ChatGPT as a sp sparring partner. I yeah. say, how can I prepare for a job interview for a, a sales calls? And uh, uh, so I, I worked on this prompt, and I choose a kind of sales uh, call. But you can you can adapt it for a, a job interview. And the idea is you said to ChatGPT, well, now you are a sales professional. Um, uh, I, I, sorry, I don't have it on my, I, I need so to move let, it. <laughs> let, maybe let me read what, what, what is the prompt. You, you are yeah. an expert sales person training and coaching new sales trainers. You focus on the critical and essential sales skills an excellent salesperson must know to respond to customer sales objection. Please always ask questions before giving a, re a response to improve your understanding of the question and your response. Your product is HubSpot CRM. You contact pre-qualified leads about the professional version of the CRM. More information here. And we've got the um, the link to the to the HubSpot website. Your role is to respond to all objection and use a convincing tone for the lead to subscribe to an annual plan. Is that understood? And you've got the first uh, answer of uh, yeah. of Chat GPT that explains. Yes, I understand. I know what exactly uh, I have to do. And after that. You challenge ChatGPT uh, by ask by, by uh, with client exactly. objection. So, 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 
yeah so yeah so just to go back to, to the prompt so firstly uh, you know as we saw the previous weeks you yeah. need to tell chat gpt who is he supposed to uh, impersonate so in this case it's very important you are an expert person and basically you act like you are coaching some other people to 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 become better salesperson okay so to prepare for the objections so who they are so what do they need to do and how are they going to do it they are going to coach you okay uh, the product i choose is uh, up spot crm because i think in in uh, in the model of ChatGPT, it was quite well known in terms of features capabilities benefits so that's why i didn't i, I took a product that more or less everybody knows uh, and uh, so the role is basically hard to uh, the, the objective of the training is how do you try to convince people answer the objections to uh, by uh, the annual enterprise plan. I think that was some, yeah, the uh, enterprise plan and not the free plan or whatever. Uh, so that's something that was, I think, about $800 per month. So uh, that, that's why in terms of objections and trainings, uh, it, it needs to be uh, 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 well prepared because it's like a 10K uh, yearly investment. Um, so. Uh, typically, uh, after I choose like a couple of questions, maybe you want to go through them, uh, Frédéric? Yeah, for sure. So maybe the first one. I don't need a CRM. Uh, and uh, and ChatGPT generate a response to that. And most important thing is also asking questions to, uh, to help create a real, a real dialogue with your potential customers. So for instance, I don't need a CRM. So answer is, I completely understand where you're coming from. However, let me ask you this. How are you currently managing your customer interaction and keeping track of important information like the contact details, communication history, and sales pipeline? So you speak about people needs. A CRM can help you streamline these processes and make them more efficient. With HubSpot CRM, you can easily track all your customer interaction in one place, manage your sales pipeline, and get insight into your business performance. Plus, the professional version comes with even more advanced features like predictive lead scoring and custom reporting. Overall, a CRM can save you time, improve your team productivity, and help you make better business decisions. Would you be interested in learning more about how HubSpot CRM can benefit your business specifically? So this is the kind of answer we've got. Uh, you, you can ask, for instance, I use Excel and that's fine with me. Uh, it generates other kind of, uh, of answer. Or uh, one uh, classic objection, it's too expensive. And once again, ChatGPT generates a very, very great uh, objection. So, if you want to uh, to have more details about uh, this prompt, feel free to uh, to DM us, and we will be more than happy to to share with you about this kind of, this kind of prompt. And um, and that's it for our today video. We hope you find it informative and entertaining. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel or um, you, our uh, LinkedIn page. Uh, by subscribing, you will be notified whenever we release new content. So we, you will never miss uh, a bit. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you in the next uh, video. Thanks, Cyril. Bye. Bye, Frederick. Bye, everybody.